So we have two more lectures, and then we have Thanksgiving for here. And I have to do another lecture somehow. Um, so I'm going to be away for the first week of, uh, after Thanksgiving, which is actually so we're going to half a week plus in the main exam. And uh, so we're trying to sort this out when we have this final piece. So it could be. So what about 4.30 to 7.15 on a Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. The final exam. Yeah. Yeah. Presentation. The presentation. Yeah. There will be a problem. And then a second problem. No. That would be real. Yeah. All right. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Okay. All right. okay. <laughs> We could do that. All right, so, so uh, uh, who's so, so, who, 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 who's aware of what's going on on Twitter for you? Anyone? I know someone looks at the birdie. There was a Twitter for you. Yeah, my Twitter feed, talk to me, because I want to ask you. Okay, so, maybe? I mean, sorry. If you know the thing, then just don't, don't, um, don't worry about this. Okay, so here's the question. Five seconds to think about it. Just to give yourself an honest answer to a ridiculous question. What's the most random number between 1 and 20? If you know it, you know it. How many people know this? Think of a really, what's the most random number between 1 and 20? Okay, get in your head. Yes, 1 through 20. Just kind of mull on that one. Those words are important. This is a tiny sample space now. Okay. So, so, four four so, so what do you think? Seven. Eleven. Yeah, I thought seventeen. Thirteen. Okay. So, um, so, so, so this, this is, this is, I first saw this actually in chaos class in like 992. Colin Thompson is a professor in at Melbourne. Maybe 992, something like that. Yes, I am. Anyway, so, uh, and I sort of, sometimes I put this up, but I, I put this up online. So I made, I made a little video for it, the behest of a former student yesterday. And um, anyway, well, you, you, you can, can see that. Basically, this is the story. You can argue. It's, 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 I, I, again, again randomness is weird. Most random makes no sense. sense. But. So, so some of you are also saw this. But okay. Have, have you seen, seen this before? before? Elsewhere? Mm. Okay. okay. All right. So, so here's the argument. Uh, it can't be right with one of good random number. Uh, and, and so, so when I ask large groups, groups really 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 it's usually about at least a half, we'll say, 17. 17 is great. Okay, so it can't be any number, number. This is obviously not going to be any number. So we'll give it all these guys. It can't be uh, can't be one. That's that's the start. You can't have that. That doesn't... That's, 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 three is too small. So you have any multiple three, so that's all right. Right? And five... Five is just a very standard number that's not surprising, not random, random. whatever these things mean. So we'll give you that, we've already got rid of these other ones. These guys are lucky in those, or unlucky in those, depending on the So they have resonance with people. The reason all the truth. I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely all in this plot, right? <laughs> 11, not bad. Two ones, it doesn't have a good feel to it. So, a 19 is too close to 20. So that's just a good, right? So, 17, right? And in the video, I point out that, uh, with more advanced, advanced mathematics, mathematics, you can show that 73 is a much random number between 1 and 100. So, 37 is close to it. I mean, obviously, it can't be a single digit thing. It can't be in the 90s. 50s is too close to the middle. Why is 73 more random than 37? I don't know. I don't know. It's, 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 it's a little bit of an question. It's really going to take some advances in, in, in uh, understanding human type of as to what, what you know. But it's pretty funny. It's the same with like the the line. Like if you tell someone you're going to play one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a combination. You and you should feel, feel like all of those other combinations are exactly the same as that. Exactly. Because now everybody's like, no, this is much better. My birthday. You want to say something? Is there something else happening besides you just being like, I don't like that number? I don't like that number. I gave a human reason. 
Okay, so it's a science game. Yeah, right. like, no, it's, it's a human game. It's a human game. Right, right. 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 Computer just says whatever. Right. Okay. Right. 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 That's but people don't. I mean, you guys did say 11, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13,
And if they have an axe to grind, which they probably do, because they're you know, in the vicinity, then they have a torpedo that they think, or oh, maybe they're your buddy, you know, they, you know, it's just wrong. I mean, it's just so wrong. Uh, so you can struggle and struggle. I think economics is really the worst of this because papers can take two or three years to get published. And then you'll have versions of them online somewhere. And they'll refer to the, the previous versions of themselves. So, you know, all right. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit about that. The, the famous paper in here had nine reviewers, actually. It was very controversial when this stuff was in science. Uh, so uh, at least one person resigned from the science editorial for whatever, from what I understand. So from the get-go, very, uh, very controversial. But a very famous old story. So, you know, this is a big deal. It's biology, ecology, it's kind of how, how, you know, so we have evolution, we have this, right, evolution is games. Essentially, we've got chemistry and physics and all these horrible other things limiting our games, but that's where it starts from. Um, you know, life is the advent of, of algorithms, I think. Uh, so, but they play within this context of physics, right? So you, you can only, you can't have giant ants and you, know, you, you can only do certain kinds of shapes. And the five fingers thing might be weird, I don't know about that, but you know, there are certain um, limitations. Fish have, you know, five, so if they, so sort of fast that it should be shaped in certain ways, like cubes and so on. So, so that goes on the road. Well, it's like there was a thing bad happening. All right. <laughs> I, I was going to say, it's like there should be little numbers around this. Okay, all right. Uh, boy, a student blew up. <laughs> Turn to the world. Just one more way for it. It's just a it's return to the parents. Um, okay, so, um, sorry. Never happened. Okay, so uh, here. Okay, so we have um, have this great, this great law of metabolism. Right? So this is a big deal. Of how we talked about engines the other day with the scaling for engines, uh, great, right? What's that? Uh, you know, so we, these are things we built. So evolution built life, and elephants run at certain. Um, they run at certain. You know, they have to eat a bunch to do this, and they have to destroy a lot of things when they do that. But they 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 run for engines of sorts. You know, how much does it take to run your, how much does it take to run your mouse and your, your various kinds of birds and so on? Given they fly, they do a funny thing. Um, and then how does that all fit together, right? So we have only a few elephants and we're good at getting rid of them. We have a bad kind of idea that ivory is good for us. Um, even elephants that are carved out of ivory, for some reason we'll, we'll sell that to ourselves. Um, so, but there are, you know, there are less of those. There are less blue whales than Right? They, they need some space, okay? but there are lots of tiny little things, plankton, uh, and so on, all these little guys. So there's, a, there's all sorts of scaling, the whole thing fits together in this giant system which can explode. I mean, the whole frog thing we were just talking about is a good example of things blowing up. Um, certainly introduced species can take over places and all sorts of things can happen. It really boils up and down. Um, but the whole thing functions in some way. And so, Energy is, is, is a big part of it. So here we have a, uh, this is a shrew. This is a tiny little We talked about it, it's like two or three grams. Ridiculous. So this is the smallest mammals that we have. I guess bats. There are smaller bats right, in terms of weight. But furry ones that run around and grow. Um, and elephants are the biggest ones we have. Yes, we have some, some that are extinct now. This is the elephant shrew, which is very confused. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, okay. So, um, shrew are pretty cool things. Okay, so but there's, this, there's this punitive law, it's a relationship between basal metabolic rate, right? So you're sitting down, watching the TV, you're an elephant watching the TV, you're just chilling out, it's not a very, it's not a big, it's not, it's not CSI, it's, like, it's like, <laughs> just chilling out, and uh, maybe watching a train or way, just, right? and so you met, and someone hooked you up with some things and measures how much energy you use, right? This is how we do it. And this has been out for a long, long time, people have done it with all sorts of, or we just don't have a little history for this, because it's, it's um, but livestock was a big deal, right? So we put sheep in things and put little, you know, measured how much, measured how much they ate, how much they put out, all sorts of different kind of ways of measuring consumption. So that's a, that makes this a bit hard if you're trying to put together meta studies, right? You have to figure out what everyone else has done. Uh, but that's been done. Um, so let's see. So, so it's a scaling law. This is some power. So if it was, if it was kind of, um, so it could be one, right? So if it was one, it's like all of your mass is somehow involved in that resting state. 
uh, which is a bit extreme, right? You kind of, would, it would be nice if you could run it a, if that power is less than one. That, that, that would be kind of a good point. So you get a return to scale. Your elephant could be, you know, okay. Um, it doesn't explode because this is resting, right? This is not running around. So you have to be able to run around. And I will say right now that it seems that, from studies I've seen, there are less of these. Uh, if you study organisms going as fast as they can, which you can imagine what investigators did to you know, facilitate that, you know, trade models and all sorts of things, um, fear, I don't know. So they, um, you know, before uh, various uh, institutional methods, uh, sort of restrictions set in. So that might be mass of the one. And, I'll, and so it seems that it is, there's general complete acceptance that it is less than one for the resting step, right? <coughs> there's an argument about what this. Uh, exponent is that has been going on for 80, 90 years now. It doesn't get any better. Uh, but the difference is at 12. Right? Okay. So, <clears throat> but there's a fundamental science story in here. So, and uh, actually can have more uh, serious implications when you think about scaling up drugs and so on. Right? So the scaling will matter if you're doing things with mice and then you want to put in your humans. So it will matter. Um, <clears throat> all right, so this uh, C, there the, the seems to be a, a story that the, this proof factor depends somewhat on the body plan. So for mammals, we have these four large groups. Um, things with blood in them. So we have, uh, I'm going to say mammals. Uh, what am I trying to say? Animals. Yeah, but I'm trying, this is poikilu, right? This is, uh, but there are reptiles as well, and it's a different thing. And there's Nazis. Hibernation is another problem. What's that? Just absence include like all dinosaurs and let's get the dot because the dinosaur is tricky. Yeah, but by the way we have the the, the, the egg which comes first, the egg or the chicken, right? The, that thing. You just can't say it, right? Because it's the egg. Anyway. Alright. <laughs> dinosaur. Dinosaur comes. Um, okay, so we have uh, or category of birds, the, the stories that they run, they seem to run a little harder, right? So if you take a cell out of a mammal and put it in a petri dish, it's a different Thing. We'll run in a different way. But if you look at one inside of an organism, um, they tend to run hotter in birds. Uh, Eutherium mammals, so placental mammals, us and the rest of the team that give birth to, to live young, um, which is you know, a pretty, pretty big team. So that's 36 to 38. Uh, marsupials, the pouch characters, right? They put them in a, put them in a bag. Leave the hospital if you're feeding the bag. Um, <laughs> we've got a whole bunch of those in Australia. Uh, my sequels they seem to run up. And then the most excellent monotremes, of which there are these two broad kinds, the platypus and the echidna. Absurd that these are cousins. They lay eggs, right? So, they're, so there's sort of a story that, well, at least they lay eggs as well. They're, the whole flying thing makes them kind of need to run, over, run their motors a little high, their little cellular motors. All right. Yeah, but these, there are lots of things going on with these kinds of things. But uh, yeah, the, the um, electromagnetic kind of uh, location, <laughs> we got little poison spikes back here. It's a, good, a lot of good stuff. Of course, the beak. You know, they thought this thing was a uh, Europeans when they brought them back. Right? They thought it was a hoax that someone stuck a duck to a beaver or something, um, <coughs> which you know was a fair guess in those days. Anyway, lay, they lay eggs, so they're, different. they're a different bunch. All right. So what you might expect from very naive uh, statements is uh, alpha is two thirds, and the reason is this is resting state. So you don't want to run too hot, and you've got to be able to, you know, not boil. So there's not talking about sweating or any of those things, which is a different way. Um, we lose heat, we, I mean, organisms in general, lose heat in different ways. Different organisms have different methods. You know, the dog has to put the tongue out the front and you know, get going like that. We're good at sweating. Um, <coughs> all right, so power, this uh, metabolic rate, proportional to surface area. So that's a, that's a very naive statement. And of course, we're going to do the classic physicist will like this, the um, assume a spherical cow. Uh, no, it's not quite true, but isometric scaling. Of this. So we're going to have a, that's not sorry. Um, all right, so we're going to have a spherical cows of different sizes. Yeah. And we're going to have their patches. All right. So, um, all right. So we'll have the scaling like this. And uh, obviously, so uh, volume, surface area scaling is volume to the two thirds. A little tiny back of the envelope, back of the stamp calculation, right? So surface area is length scale squared, volume is length scale cubed, so we get a volume to the two thirds. Okay? As long as, you know, the shape isn't changing some weird way, which we'll address a little bit too. 
volume and mass basically, you know, roughly these things are scales in the same way. So um, this is all the naive thing, right? And uh, isometric scaling. So we expect maybe log normal fluctuations. So that if we put this on a, uh, a log log plot and we have lots of organisms, we have log mass, which is our big piece, and log 10 of power, or the spatial metabolic rate, then the sum scatter. And if we looked at, you know, we draw a line through it, this is a two thirds exponent, that's the simple thing. And sort of a Gaussian spread of it, fine. Which is a log normal, because we're in log space. Okay, so you might check these things. And then we can appeal, get a little quantum out, and we can say we'll appeal to the, the Stefan Boltzmann law for black bodies, because you are radiating, you know, you are, they are giving off infrared. That's why the, those friendly people from the United States government can find you at night um, when you're running through the woods. Um, <coughs> unless you wear the special 10 foil stuff. So, um, <laughs> so these, these are a couple of constants that very smart people thought, thought about. And, uh, the surface area is in here. So you, the energy you're giving off is proportional to surface area, right? Ultraviolet catastrophes, we could go into all sorts of stuff, but that's not something we're talking about. Ooh, this, this, this is a good plot. So um, you are giving off, uh, you know, so there's conduction, there are different things, but there is this whole, I can see you in the dark thing. Uh, and again, so I'll call it the church of quarterology, is that alpha is three quarters, so it's different. It's, this, it's actually a, a so we had two thirds, this is the naive statement, three quarters plus one fourth. And this is a beautiful magical possibility, right? And I'll give you the history of where it comes from because it's kind of true. Uh, and then we'll sort of race through some, uh, some arguments that have come later because the arguments just, just keep going. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so <coughs> yeah, and there are quarter powers everywhere. Um, so this is a bit weird. I will say from the outset, and this is never really mentioned much, is that this is not as good a returns to scale story, right? It's a higher power. So you, as you move up, as life is producing bigger and bigger things, they, they're using more energy just to you know, sit still and watch the TV. <laughs> play the uh, play rec magic rectangles. Okay, uh, so this is just a 12. Not so much. Um, yeah, so if it's higher than two thirds, I guess this is what I just said. Right? So there's a fundamental inefficiency in biology. Some reason, there's some reason that it's having that organisms have to uh, kind of run a little hard just to kind of keep it together. So you can that you know we've got the, all of these things have hearts inside them beating away, right? So that's gonna that's a that's a big deal, right? So we have to think about that. Uh, if you want to compare organisms to cities and so on, this is a really big difference, right? Is that or a, big, a very special part of what we are? We've got this thing that's just ticking away, uh, and it's supplying nutrients to us through in this distributed way, right? So we've got, we're going to get nutrients to the whole thing. Uh, it's being spread out through a, this kind of branching network structure and then all being pulled back in through another branching network structure, right? The arterial and the venal um, networks. Um, so they need to be somehow running hotter. So we need to have to explain why that is. All right, so that's a big, that's a big piece. Uh, more things. So then it's sort of been found as a result of this or claims, right? So of course, when we say three quarters, we mean someone measured 0.72 or 0.70. You know, there's some funny things. Uh, number of uh, capillaries, capillaries. Which one do I say? Capillaries. I believe I've said capillaries and actually physically harm someone's head. You know, right? <laughs> this is one student who couldn't handle the uh, alternate uh, ways of saying things. Anyway, so um, I can see him wince. It was just I felt bad. All right. So. Uh, all right, so uh, time for reproductive maturity, we talked about this, so there's mass to a quarter. So that's scaling pretty slowly. Uh, heart rate, so here's this beautiful story. Heart rate is going down. So the ticker rate goes down. Uh, all sorts of things. The aorta gets bigger, but you know, at this certain, certain rate. Um, depends if you're a cross country runner or not, that's a different issue. Um, and uh, population density, very interesting uh, extra claim is that that's going down as mass to the minus three quarters. So if you multiply uh, mass to the three quarters with this one, so the energy, how the energy, mass to the three quarters with this guy, you get mass to the zero. So that means that elephants collectively are using as much as the mice collectively. Which is a very sort of appealing, beautiful idea, right? So this is equal partitioning of energy at all scales. Maybe, I don't know. But it's a, very, it's a very interesting idea, and, and maybe it's not far off. 
Uh, but you can imagine if it's one way or the other, you know, one of the, at one end of the spectrum, it's either the screws <coughs> that are using more, or the mice, or whatever, probably mice, mice, and the characters of a similar size, um, or the elephants, and so you can wonder about that. Cities, similar kind of idea. Uh, so here we have, this is a beautiful, you know, you get people write, and people will write poems about this, I mean, they, they, will, they get very excited about this, and it is very beguiling and beautiful. So if your lifespan, and we'll take away these exponents for a little bit, if, the, you know, if it's really a quarter or not, lifespan is growing as some this power beta of m of mass, and average heart rate is going down. You multiply these two guys together, right? So multiply this, and then we get a number of heartbeats, you know, in your typical lifespan, and it's it's to reproductive maturity, uh, mass to zero. So that's lo that's a that's a you know beautiful thing. The universe is wonderful. Um, Mice have as many little ticks as, uh, as elephants. It's just that they're, you know, they run at a much faster rate. All right, so maybe, 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 but as I said, that's a poetry exercise. Uh, and of course, you can kind of dial it up and down depending on how you know, healthy you are and if you fed your rats McDonald's or something. You know, like, <laughs> you know, you know, you know what you can do. Um, I'm sure they can create mice that do whatever. Order it from a catalog. Yeah. Okay. So, and then there's a number, right? So there's a number you can kind of, you know, get another envelope out and mess around with that a little bit, and you get 1.5 billion. That's how many you got. <coughs> so then you'll have arguments like, well, you shouldn't do any exercise because you're using up too much, and then you say, well, but then I've got a lower head resting heart. Yeah. <laughs> Death by fractions. All right. So, uh, so where does this come from? So this, 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 this battle. So the 1840s. This is fantastic. You have a uh, tobacco plantation in France, and the people running it is, you know, the Industrial Revolution, let's make the humans do things. Um, it's all good, some of them are down coal mines, and, and so on. And, and so, you know, we're trying to make it all efficient. We're, we're thinking about our organizational structures. And apparently the people in charge of this thing went and asked a couple of physicists, or local you know, scientists, what, uh, what's the right amount of food to give people based on their size? Right? Because you've got the goulash, you get the slop, the gruel, whatever it is, and you don't want to be like giving them all the same amount because you don't want to waste anything, right? It was an efficient operation. Um, so I mean, it's just ridiculous. Okay, so so they say, well, they use this argument, they use that surface area argument. So they say, well, it should scale as mass as the two things. We can figure it out. We will get a little, you know, do some calculations for you. So it's kind of right. So you know, if you have someone who's one and a half times as big as this, you know, the big, biggest character is one and a half times as big as the smallest one, you don't give them one and a half times as much food. You, we're going to do it one and a half times two thirds. Okay. <laughs> Look good people. Alright, so this, there's a funny history to this. So it turns out there is actually a kind of a paper that was published or sort of released, but it's, it's, it's uh, a bit hard to get hold of, but I do have a reference to it. Um, yeah, so 1838, 39, yeah. I mean, there really is this Saracen woman. Well done, people. All right. So this, that, that's, so we start with humans. We start with right, making that whole thing more efficient. Then this is more of a, I believe, a kind of more of a basic science question at the time. So this is Philip Max Rutner. This is the 1880s, measured a bunch of dogs. Got dogs, dogs, you know, you have different sizes. You do pretty well with that, and found Empirically, the two, the two thirds, which was kind of the intuitive thing, was pretty good. All right, so that, and I, we'd have to look up why, why they were studying dogs. This is actually still an issue for dog food companies, because in that same way, you want to, make, you want to figure out how much you know, the Chihuahua versus the Great Dane. Because <laughs> if you know dogs, right, they will eat an impossibly large amount of food before, they will basically eat until they explode. So, um, <laughs> whereas cats will be, you know, Plotting your death. Okay, so, um, <coughs> so you have to be careful. All right. Okay, so in the 1930s, we get we were with the human things out, so we start to think about livestock collectively. So this is all about livestock. You've got sheep, um, you know, goats, all sorts of organisms that you're trying to feed. Cows, obviously, and um, pigs, and so on. So what's the what's the scaling for that? And so there is a there's a, a whole body of work that starts, you know, really in the 20s and so on, uh, where and so we're putting these, these, you know, these larger kind of mammals on, on things. And we go to zoos and measure elephants, actually. 
And, and this is here because I think it was Benedict in one of these studies, if you read it, um, changed the, uh, the amount that they estimated for the elephant because it was standing up eating hay or something. I mean, there's sort of a, there's some weird, like, messing around with things. It moved it by 10%. One of these, I believe it's the Brody one, has a mixture of empirical data and then data from a formula that they had before mixed together and then a regression. I mean, it's just a horrible mess. And they get a 0.73, right? So they think it should be two thirds. They get a 0.73, it's an empirical observation, and they say that's the standard. We're just going to use it, right? So the next step in this is show we cabal. Okay, so um, arises. So we have Cliver, Max Cliver. Uh, and so there's a funny history of science. Here. So Cliver, who is, was from Germany, ended up at UC Davis, actually, he spent most of his career there, which will be important in the next couple of slides. 13 mammals. One, one example from each of 13 mammals. We could dig it up. There's a mouse in there and a llama and that sort of thing. I don't know about llamas, but you know, there's some, some smaller and bigger characters, right? Um, looked at 13 mammals and found 0.76. And so this is kind of a Pythagorean ideal. Said, so, all right, it's not two thirds. Let's get the nearest close one uh, fraction that's easy to do with three quarters. Three quarters is the next one up, right? So you could have. You know, there's all sorts of other possibilities floating around in there, seven twelfths or something like that, but very cool. Um, and uh, so become, this is known as Cliver's Law. And so this is sort of moved out into other areas as well. There's, you know, is there a sort of a Cliver's Law for cities? Very, very famous. So it's a law of energy metabolism. Um, I'm getting a bit worried. Okay, so uh, funny thing is, and I'll say this again, if you, so it's only 13, if you, 13 points. So if you, yeah, I mean, the regression is correct. I mean, the numbers are in the paper. And it's 1932. If you, um, if you do a regression up to about 40 kilograms, you see it really fits two thirds. And this is like five of these. And then it's higher for, for larger ones. So we'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, there's a crazy couple of, uh, they're more than papers, they're like small booklets. One's from 1950, another one's from 1960, from this character, Hemmingson who worked at a Co the Copenhagen, uh, hospital in Copenhagen. And I don't know what was going on, but just thought this was an interesting thing. Actually, years ago, I went to the Harvard Medical School to find these things, and I was at MIT, right? So they had to kind of put me in a suit or something. Um, <clears throat> watched me the whole time. But I found these books, and they're right next to each other. Of course, there's just these two books. Uh, and, and all around them, nothing is touched. But these have been kind of rifled through over and over and over. It's kind of like, there's a holy grail, like mystery of <coughs> biology and life and science and something. There's some very special thing. Because two thirds is boring, but three quarters is, you know, the cue music. Okay. This is a terrible um, fungus of sorts that has an awful name. Um, but Hemmingson sort of said, all right, well, what about, let's go all the way down to unicellular stuff and, and just sort of start piling it up. There are birch trees in there and all sorts of good stuff, right? So it's just, let's. let's Put everyone on the line. Uh, he actually, if you look at what he did, he, he assumes, and I have this, he, he assumes uh, three quarters is true and he's just fitting the, the prefactor. So it's, it's a funny business. Okay, <coughs> the cabal. Okay, so there's a, uh, a symposium on energy metabolism, because I mean, again, still really largely interested. There's the medical side of things and there's the livestock side of things. So there's these two important pieces. Uh, Alfred was three quarters was, was actually made as the official exponent. This is good science. Uh, they had a vote, and there's a little write-up about it. Uh, 29, 29 to 0 was the vote. Uh, they actually uh, published, the Cabal published their, uh, their proceedings, so you can, you can read about it. Uh, this kind of nonsense type. Very strange statements that they make. Anyway. Um, so that's extraordinary. I mean, I, I think that's kind of extraordinary. Uh, so yeah, so, and this is work that I did. You know, there's many people involved, but I, I was associated with this with my advisor, Dan Lofman at MIT, and Josh Weitz, who's a PhD student with me, and many other, obviously, millions of people. We got associated with it because of networks in general. And so we went and found all these papers, and people know about these things. But it was definitely a Foucault's pendulum type situation. You know? No? Um, yeah? yeah. I'm about to wake up, I'm sorry. So if you know, if you're, yeah, you know you're in trouble, um, they'll come and get you. All right, so there are lots of questions. What happened, right? Is two thirds was a good thing, it's going on well, I guess wasted. 
Um, sorry. And um, <clears throat> yes, there's all sorts of good stuff in there. So is two thirds really dead? Could have faked its own death, or kind of people would vote on scientific fact. So it's a truth aside. All right, let's see. Uh, okay, so you know this is what happens. Someone writes a book about it, and it's very much enshrined. You know, then, then you're in trouble. It's in it's in biology books and so on. Just sort of mentioned as a thing. Because everything I've showed you, there's no theory for this, right? That's really important. There's no theory for the three quarters. It's a basic kind of simple, boring theory for two thirds. Um, you know, just toss it off on the, on the envelope. But there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing around for this. So Whitfield, I kind of feel the problem. I actually said someone, I, I was interviewed by this guy a long time ago, and I, I said someone should write about this, because this is a mad story. So he did, I think. And um, he was a journalist writing for Nature quite a bit. Anyway, the trouble is he wrote about the, that it's a glorious story. All right. Much controversy. So look, it really is. So there's our paper. This was a you know one paper, uh, the unbelievers, and there's lots of stuff that came after it. And I'll show you some of the others. So here's here's some data. This is actually from uh, Hoisner. So this guy Fred Hoisner, talked to him a long time ago. He was a emeritus professor by this time, working on pots. He was a pot, he'd become a pot. Uh, but he had he and and uh, Clive were friends. They worked at Davis together. They're both from Europe and they worked, they worked together for many years. But they had this thing. They, Poisoner didn't believe in other stuff. And they would fight about it. But they're, they're actually family friends. They're going on holidays together and so on. So, um, from what I, you know, my conversations with Poisoner, he said towards the end of Clive's life, it was sort of a generation older, he, he started to kind of say, well, looks like you have good data. <clears throat> Maybe you're right. Uh, so it became. So, so, you know, sort of heading towards this kind of detente, but <coughs> something happened, actually. All right, so let's see. So, um, so, so Hoist, you know, great effort to do this. He put together 391 animals from all these different studies and, and did a good job of putting it all in, you know, it's all listed in this, in this great lengthy paper, all the numbers, all the citations. Uh, blue line, red line, so two thirds, three quarters. Now, you know, you can't do that and say that anything is real here, but you will see that sort of for the larger mammals, so this is, uh, this is in kilograms, so it's a, um, is that right? No, grams. So this is, yes, grams. So we've got little characters out here, 10 grams sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and elephants are going to be up here, 4,000 kilograms. Uh, but when you look at this, and actually, so here's a, here's a shocking one. This is birds. This is from a different study. So it's passerine versus non-passerine, poaching versus non-poaching is, is, is something that people <coughs> Have, have in the past tried to reclaim three quarters because if you put all the birds together, and the ostrich is about 100 kilograms, the heaviest one, um, and just run a regression through it, you get two thirds. Spectacular. There's just really no question about that statistically. Uh, but if you break it into passerines and non passerines, then maybe you kind of get 0.7 for each one, which is a very odd thing to do. And again, you can say they have different body, like there's a different kind of prefactor for them, right? So you, so you can try to get this sort of scale out of it. Because the you know, one is bigger than the other. All right. OK, measuring these exponents. We've done a lot of measuring these exponents. It's totally a mess. Um, this is an important point in general. And so I think it's a good thing to take away, not just about you know, the specific stuff we're talking about here. But let's say you have a bunch of points. In some cases, you know exactly what x is. Right? You measure it. It's the weight of the animal. It's the whatever it is. <coughs> It's how many people live in the city. Even there, of course, there's going to be some error. Um, sometimes you know what this is. Sometimes you measure this really well. But often there's some error, right? And there could be error in both pieces. And so regressions generalize from ordinary least squares because ordinary least squares presumes that error is only in y, that you've exactly beautifully measured x. Right. So you can have all sorts of complicated kinds of regressions that start to say, OK, there's kind of an error estimate in both. And there's a rather beautiful one <coughs> called um, reduced major axis to standard major axis, which assumes that, um, yeah, that the errors are kind of uh, uncorrelated, but they're, and they're in both directions. Very, very nice thing. And it turns out for that one that the slope you get out here, let's call it uh, the slope, we'll call it RMA, is actually of all things. The standard deviation of your 
y variables, whatever your y numbers are, right, divided by the standard deviation of x. So that's kind of a funny thing. So whatever the characteristic kind of spread is for y and x. No. Way different. Right. I can give you some both. Um, I know. It's a brutal time of the day. So this is a very important. I'll point you to some papers here. If this is an issue, if this is something you work with, then it's a good thing. It's really important thing to think about. What's it called? Reduced major axis or standardized major axis. I'll give you a couple. There'll be links in here. Um, and we can assume the measure of mass in this case is pretty good. That's going to be so. It's going to be fairly good for ordinary least squares. It's important thing to um, But metabolic rate is pretty messy. That's a hard thing to measure. That's obviously a hard thing. Um, so you can do linear regression. Of course, you assume Gaussian errors and so on. Um, a little bit for regression. Uh, you know, you might. Let me say this. So here it is. Standardized major axis linear regression. A couple of links here to the papers about them. Some very nice math in this. And there's another thing in here, is that this quantity, if you multiply it by r, the correlation coefficient, so r is less than 1, typically, if you multiply it by r, the correlation coefficient, you'll get the regression, the ordinary loose squares regression slope. And if you divide it by r, then you get the ordinary loose squares regression for y, for um, x as a function of y. So make this work. So they all match up with r equals 1 if it's perfectly correlated. Perfectly correlated with all these regression things. But that's really nice. And that, turns, that means that actually you can take, you can take data where they've done only really squares that shouldn't have. And if they put in a correlation coefficient, you can back this out. Right. So I said this. Yes, yes, yes. I said this. Um, so, this is, I mean, there's all, all sorts of good stuff. This is, this is the only linear regression that's scale invariant. So it doesn't matter, which seems to be a hugely important thing, right? So it doesn't matter what these, if these are in cubits or bananas or, you know, lengths of frog or something. It doesn't matter what the axes are, right? What the, what the things are. It was first, it's first well, it's attributed to Paul Samuelson, who's a famous economist. Um, others have come up with it. Well, you know, a lot of people worry about this, right? Hashtags don't want to kill them. This is a big deal. This is a really, I don't know. You should, you should definitely check this thing out. Alright. Okay, I said these things. I forgot about these things. Yeah. So this is beautiful, right? So slope is um, R times the slope of the ordinary least squares of X on Y. So this one, and then the other way for Y on X. Alright. Alright. That's an aside. It's a big deal. I think you should think about it. If you are doing linear regression, which usually happens somewhere. All right. So here's a little regression table. And I know this is, should not get people upset. But if you take, so I showed you the plot of mammals, right? The, the metabolic rate is a function of mass. So if you do regression, because evolution produced mammals getting bigger and bigger and bigger, someone ridiculously much asked me what would happen if you measured from the top down. So what we're going to do is, Right, do a regression for here, then here, then here, then here, then here. We're going to open it up in an evolution kind of way. What's the, what's the book the, um, where, the, where the kids grow down, they start at their height, and then they feed off the ground? Bam, yeah. So it's not that. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so if you do that, so we're going to take the little critters, the bigger critters, you know, add some bigger critters and so on. Then here's your scaling exponent. Pretty good, for two thirds. And then what happens is, as you put in these big ones, it starts to sort of move up. And there's been a lot of discussion about what's going on with these, but these are all just old studies. And really, someone has to go out there and measure drafts and all these guys again, and who put them on treadmills, whatever they need to do, pacify them with um, computing ones. And it's opening up, you know, so there are all these herbivores out there, and maybe that they, for some reason, were walking around too much or something. You know, so that's possible. Here are birds, so if you do that same kind of thing, we're going to open it up, evolution-wise. Uh, you'll see these exponents tracking very nicely, and this is good for two-thirds. Two-thirds is a win. So this is going to be something different from the mammals. 
again, maybe it's a measurement problem for larger organisms. Um, this is, I'm just going to, you know, I, I can't show you everything here. So, um, here's, a, here's a slightly, okay, so the idea is we're going we're gonna to presume, we're going to set up a hypothesis test. We're going to say, well, all right, it's some, it's some exponent alpha, and then, you know, the hypothesis test is it's not. Um, fine, right, so we're going to specify it, fit the thing, find a p value. So, if you take all the fibers, 13 data points, from which all of this field starts, right, and all this madness of the world, probably they came from an underlying, which was really a two thirds law, you know, so it's, it's less than 10 minus 6, so it's bad, right? So that, that, that data set is not consistent with, with this. Three quarters, fine, that's good. Could easily have happened. Uh, the Brody data set doesn't quite agree very well with either of them, that's true. Poison's large data set, which is the one we're really looking at, it's 390. Um, Benton and Harvey, this is birds, this is birds, so absolutely yes for two thirds, absolutely no way for three quarters. And that's looking at the whole range, right? So if we break it up to mass less than 10 kilograms and the ones greater than 10 kilograms, then here's the exponent of the fiber, two thirds, Brody's a bit higher, poison is very close to two thirds, and here are the p So this Brody one is a bit fishy, it's the one where they mix data, like measure data and then Data, data made from the formula. So that's really great. From the twenties. I mean, these are for the large ones just by themselves. You know, maybe, maybe two thirds that's the fifth one. It certainly does for All right, but the poison one doesn't want to be. All right, you can look at the residuals and see if they have a normal distribution around them. That's what this is saying. So we can subtract out our best fit, collapse them all, and do you know, high square tests. Of our spinal test, nice. which is you drink as much as you can and you look at it and see if you like it. <laughs> so it's strange technically. Um, let's see, so here's, this is also fun. So you're going to presume an exponent and then um, fit the prefactor and then look at the residuals. And so, so, so if you if you, you can do this with anything, right? this is not, nothing to do with metabolism. Right? So you take out the fit and then you look at the residuals. Now, if, if your fit is really bad, the residuals are going to you know, go from one side to the other. They're going to start to go up, right? If you're really getting bad fit, or if they're really, right, they're going to move that way. So you can do a correlation on them and see if how uncorrelated they are. <coughs> so that's what this is. Way we can do spearmen. Okay, I want to mention spearmen. Spearmen, spiffing, spearmen, and rank correlation. You know this guy. So there's normal Pearson rank correlation. Um, uh, sorry, Pearson. Uh, correlation coefficients stands to the thing. But Rango is very, that's a very nice thing. It's actually a test of modern intensity, really, which is so you take all of your X rays and all of your Y rays and then you just turn them into their ranks, right? So you rank them from smallest to largest. So now you're going to have 1 through N here and 1 through N here. And you look to see how jumbled they are. It becomes a question of permutations, actually. So the mathematics is perfect for this, so you, you, you really can solve it. <coughs> And so you, so you take data, turn it into their ranks, and then see how well they, um, right? So if, it, if it's purely monotonic, then you'll have one through n here, and one through n here, they'll be getting bigger. <laughs> so actually, more than, a, more than a, a linear correlation. It's just a test of monotonicity. OK, so that's, that's a good thing. I recommend this guy beautifully described in all places, um, numerical recipes for C and Fortran, which has Eight descriptions. Eight descriptions. All right, so you can do things, you can do tests, you can do various stuff. Okay, so the plan for this then is let's do that, let's fit, we're going to fit, uh, we're going to take from 0.6 to 0.8, all of those exponents will break it up. We'll fit, we'll fit the law, you can do this obviously again, so we're a general thing, we'll fit this over and over. Uh, and then we'll get the p value to see how good this fit was. So we're going to subtract the fit out and then look at the residuals and see if they have a correlation. We want them to be at zero. Okay, so this is a log. This is 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 2. So here the, here's point zero 0.01 and point zero 0.05. They're kind of classic made up uh, significance points for statisticians. Which, you know, when you see that in an ad for some drug that they want you to use, and they say it's significantly better than. It's a disaster, right? That, that word is just destroyed because it's significantly better in a statistical sense, which has nothing, it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't really connect at all necessarily with 
uh, size or the pattern effect. Right? So, so you can don't, you play two games. It's a great game actually, because you can say it's significantly, statistically significant with you know, no effects. You just leave that bottom. When you say it has a huge effect, I mean, leave off the statistical significance, which is weird. Oh, okay. uh, so, if you do this, this is again for these different ranges. So, you can see uh, two thirds is here, three quarters is here. So, the residuals are pretty spectacularly fitting around the two thirds line. Oh, no, the residuals are uncorrelated spectacularly when you fit a two thirds line. That's still true here, so we're doing 3.2 kilograms up to 10, up to these two, and all of them. So when you put in all of them, you still get an OK fit here. You, you can, can see it's missing three quarters. That might be a little subtle, but it's kind of This is the bird thing, just kills it. So again, two thirds here, three quarters here. So here's the thing. You know, we've looked at the data. We've gone and looked at the data. And uh, we've looked at the data. And it doesn't match up with what people have been saying. So this is kind of a shock, actually. This is a bit of a disaster. Because by this point, it's assumed that there's a lot of things that are With some regularity where physicists get involved, there's some messy stuff in biology and ecology or whatever it is. And then it sort of sneaks across and like, what is that? And, um, and it sort of just goes for a special little thing and it crystallizes the numbers. Yeah. So I showed you very briefly there's one for the number of organisms as a function of size of, number of distinct species as a function of island size. And so that scales allegedly as Island area is really <coughs> a quarter. Right? I shouldn't should get the paper for it because it's basically just, just a whole scatter plot of line for it. And, um, and they say, oh, it's kind of a quarter. And then, you know, that's the original paper, and they're honest about it, they show you the thing. And if you go ahead and see the generation, see the different areas, it's a quarter. So there is this well known law in ecology that it scales as a quarter. Here we derive it from the same pile of all the Thanks. We're using laser models to explain why. Yeah. And it really happens. Physicists will be able to very cleverly find a, 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 a model that will do what you want. Okay, so there are, this has become the kind of standard way to measure powers and you get in trouble kind of if you don't use it anymore. It's a bit of a problem. Um, anyway, class A has uh, <coughs> Python code and all sorts of stuff to do this. Um, but it is, I think we must have. Uh, there's thousands of citations. Lots of things about powers and, you know, anyway, this is a reality difference. But anyway, all right. So I'm going to give you one way we used to, we suffered through measuring these experiments. I think it has a lot of good things. So pretty good. Who knows what's going on for the larger uh, mammals, at least for this data set. There's some suggestions of breaks to scaling in the shapes of animals because of rabbit. Rabbit's a rabbit. You might be able to play with the bigger mammals because they have to shape them. Um, that maybe not, actually. <coughs> the non-isometric growth leads to a lower exponent. And the reason for that is if you have a non-isometric growth, so let's say, this is very interesting. So let's say you have, so instead of these, so instead of your cows here, let's just, okay. Um, so we're going to have cows. And we, instead of have cows that are pancake-type cows, assume a pancake-shaped cow. And as you scale up, I have bigger cows, which would be hard and milk and all this sort of things. So we've got a cow. Okay, so we've got a pig. Okay, so we've got these guys. Um, this is scaling like a two-dimensional object. It's, still, it's isometric in two dimensions. Let's say it's not going to get any thicker. So it's like a low dimensional thing. It's as if it lives in a low dimensional space. And the lower your dimension, the lower your metabolic exponent will be. So that's something you can come to really But that's just an important thing about allometric scaling. Allometric scaling, if you have a non isometric scaling, but allometric scaling gives it shapes, it means you have something that's effectively in between two and three dimensions, a low dimensional set of objects. So it takes on lower dimensional attributes. Lower dimensional you know, aspects of it. Okay, just to show you, right, now it's confusing. So there's a paper from 2005 that says let's throw away those large kind of balls together, the ones that we kind of worry about, and say, and they say, okay, top of it. Uh, then you have this one uh, that is not universal, and then we're going to look at some polar algae animals, which we love using. 
Um, this is another one, this is another review, blah, blah, blah. It's a giant review. Fan Savage has this one uh, saying, what was it, it was biology. The <coughs> problems are going to be fine, so this is saying you know, the problems as well. Um, okay, this is, it's just, it's just a nice one. This is one of the cases that I'm going to talk about. Okay, ribbon networks. So, so why do these have anything to do with it? I'll tell you very quickly. So here's, a, here's not, again, again, another sort of famous, famous mysterious So you look at ribbon networks, you look at the basins. The basin, basin has, has some area. area. There's some length scale, scale involved. Well, there are two length scales. One is the, the overall length, length of the basin. Three. Wide. Okay. Okay. Computer. Three, three lengths. So there's a width, a, lot, a sort of longitudinal scale, scale, and then the length, length of the long string, which is clearly a bit of a funny thing with practice. But, you know, you're going to your boat, you're going to get it in English, you're trying to find that in a little while. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you're going to tweet it. Alright, so that's what you do. You write a little bit of it. Ah, the English. Alright, so let's see. Um, okay, so, uh, hack! This is just a survey done, right? And, um, you know, it's before satellites. Uh, well, well, sort of sort of sort of sort of um, and uh, really, I have to pull it down. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is this long, this is the strength, the length of the long stream is proportional to the area to the It's kind of a funny way to write it. And he, he observed for a bunch of this small area that it, the scale is 0.6. So, so if this was normal to dimensional scale, it's a length scale, an area, so the length of squared, so this should be a half. Right? Because it's not funny. This suggests it's a little bit funny, funny so you expect it to half. Um, other studies suggest it's greater than a half, but again, small scale kind of ones. Uh, yes, yes. You want to find universality because it's a tangent. You know, but you yeah. have to find this is true. Yeah. You have know, a beautiful story for it. We should find a boring one. This is a boring one. We have a magic story that shows this story. Um, it's all sense or something. And it is a certain element of small scales. This paper appeared in 1992, Milton Dietrich, this is a very famous geomorphologist. This is where they got a ton of data. Look at this. This is 12 orders of magnitude here. This is an area, so it can scale like that. And six orders of magnitude here. Just stuck a ton of stuff together, all sorts of basins of all kinds, and there's different shapes here. Awful. Awful pattern. But the scaling here is a half. 0.49 is the thing. So, it's kind of all this excitement about it. Kind of a little smack right there. Um, <coughs> this is plot. Um, so I just pulled it out and made it based on this. Well, 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 this, this is the largest basin. Just the largest basin in the world. So, so this is the Mackenzie River in, in, in Canada, which is very round in its, in its shape. shape. But if you, if you run a regression, even with that, if you run a regression for the whole thing, you get a half as well. So that sort of diffuses this. Magical story. But it's still interesting. These things are. Now it's still going to matter a lot. Alright, <coughs> so, just want to throw that one out there. There's a few little shapes, shapes of these numbers. So, so, so here are some, here are some, some reasons, reasons why this three quarter, quarter thing came out. So, this is, this, you know, this, this is really crucial. Cool. Um, <coughs> I think we'll go a little bit into the next couple of weeks and then I'll have the finish. Alright. <coughs> Okay, so, so here's, here's a, a crazy town town story, right? So, so this is a piece of journal, journal of theoretical biology, biology. Um, and it's sort of page, page and a half, so it's pretty easy. Biology, biology sort of gets into a fourth dimension. dimension. Does it mention time? time or something? Just, 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 you know, right, so maybe, so, so, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so, so it says, well, look, you know, this is the other theory for D equals three. Because that's the very first thing I should do, D equals three, right? Two divided by three, if you do two first. But look, oh, if, if that, that was a four, we'd have, have three quarters. quarters. So, so if we use that same surface area, area thing somehow in four dimensions, it works. And then it's like, like and then it leaves. So that's just a hang around there. Someone let that head in the wall. A little bit of a mess, as I said. Obviously, so. All right, that is exploding around. There is a science paper in 2002. Has the title of the fourth dimensional biology. It really kind of goes as it's a practical story. 
being, being fed up by the authors and so on. So it's a valid thing. I don't think so many plans for shooting a trans book. Okay, so the man has a story in that book and it's also a science paper about elastic similarities. So it's against you know, to do the sort of how um, um, column scales, which are better for nails and so on. This is kind of business. So so this is not, so the, you know, it isn't a spherical cow story, it's some, some kind of other scale. I use that 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 it's never, never really connected really connect properly with shape. shape. We'll, we'll get, get to that. Right. <coughs> but it's, 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 it's very speculative. Okay. Um, <coughs> there's Brzezhevsky. That's true. It's his blood map. It's his blood map. We've got this thing running. How's this thing running? Well, it has this whole pump. And it has to shoot it out. And there's a network to doing it. So does that add a limitation? This is the sort of thing that you're going to go to volume. It's a physical space, you can send stuff out, you can get it all back. Is this some sort of something that's just manifest in that, that you know, problem that the biology runs up against the wall? It has to kind of work a little harder. Because we've, we've said, said two thirds and three quarters, three quarters is a little harder. Okay, okay. <coughs> that's, that's just floating around. But it's a two thirds scale. What you should have seen was a very famous character back in the 50s and 60s. I don't know if I've forgotten that. It was one of these scientific people. Um, the prevention of control theory and the you know, change in society with control. Fully graded good, right? I'm just wondering if someone wants to get it. If someone wants to get it, people are fully graded good. That's in the abstract. Or you're in a movie. Or the bad guy's in front of you and they say that. It's time to leave. Right. Okay. Okay, so there we have this paper. West. So it's Jeff West. He has this interface. He's a few former time. Brown and Inquist. Brown and Inquist were ecologists, or ecologists, and most of the high energy theory were particle physicists. So you have this beautiful, different trainings and thinking. And of course, the physicists are going to solve the problem. So, okay, so here's this is one of the science papers I said. Mind review was very controversial. And this was the structure that laid out. So, mammals, we have a tree, but the Plants, so this, this, this is not really true either, but it's just kind of some idea that plants have these tubes running through them, but that's just not really even close. Here's the abstract, abstract model of this. Really, this, this is sort of left to the side. It's not, they don't, they don't solve the plants. Um, okay. okay. So, so, <coughs> so, so we've, we've got, got this hierarchical network, network structure, all these little tubes in here, right, right, that enter a series of pipes. Oh, we actually are. At least, At least that our infrastructure is. We've, We've got, got some drop in pressure, pressure across the length of any of these parts. parts. Uh, uh, there's some typical radius, there's some, some velocity here, and some length. Okay, so we can play around with the mechanics. Very hard actually because there's this whole fucking thing. You know, there's a pulse of tile flow, so it's going and go up and out. But we can think of this pipe to start with because what's the internet will do here. Uh, but then, then, then we get a loose uh, sort of an effort to think about the pulse of time. The pulse of time. All right. So, so interesting thing. thing. So, so I'm, I'm just, just giving you some. Time. There's no way, way I can tell you all this. But um, we're just, just going to touch on. So, so it's not just about a hierarchical network. Pretty good. That's generally true. I mentioned the circle of the world, I think, the other day, which is different games. I'm talking here. You've got four arterial. Lanes coming, coming in, and then there's a little roundabout, so, so you can kind of have a few of those clock up. up. So, so Markov guy, I mentioned, mentioned this other was my preference was a brain surgeon. Um, this is, I remember what you were saying, he has seen someone who's had all but one, one you know, included. And you, and and you keep going, right? right? So there are bad points where we can talk to if we can get those things. Trees are always a good example of something that is, doesn't have a lot of redundancy usually, so you take a try to tell all over it, but it's not and stuff. Okay. Um, but generally, a hierarchical structure is, is reasonable, kind of thing. Uh, but 
and his the Kikoris or whatever we're going to call them. These guys, guys are very fast now. The Shrews, 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 the Made in the middle. My mind could be wrong, actually, in the way that it tells you. Um, <laughs> I don't know enough. I know enough, enough to be given. Alright, right, so, so and here's, 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 here's sort of the, the next, next piece, and that's what we can pull some um, LaGrange um, multipliers. Ah, what are they? Yeah, got them. Just pull them. You left them in the middle of the ground? Okay. And we're going to use this, we can use this because, because why not? So, so let's, let's set up network convenience. Convenience, that seems particularly good. The engine is good all the time. Electrical engine is good. All sorts of things like that. Evolution, we want things to kind of, you know, not stuff it, that they'll be around tomorrow. So, um, except for recent evolution in human history, generally you need to have a pretty good blood flow, you know, and this is all in the yeah, mindset sort of, um, of um, it's it's sort of it's always about, about resting. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something, there's something a bit odd with colors, because they, they can be kind of asleep, and then when you start, start to run around, they kind of, you know, the blood and the, the muscles that they need. Um, um, the claims that you get, get so these are the three assumptions that are pretty reasonable. Um, there are a lot of, I guess there are a lot of statements in there, like space filling, for example, which is just transparent. True, but the opposite of this network feels space. Other things. Things. Uh, uh, the the turns out you, you get, get the magic, magic out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is, you know, this is a mechanistic explanation, and that's essentially the argument that's, that's used, used to say it's right. We have, have a mechanistic, mechanistic explanation. You don't. You don't. Right. <laughs> um, that works for fractals, which is a pretty nice achievement. Most of the scaling, you have one, the other, the proper branches, and so on. That's a fractal, which is a, that's, you know, you know mathematicians love fractals, fractal, they don't always, they can, can make them, them but, but there's no, no and, and nature, nature makes them, but we don't always, always kind of get that <coughs> mechanism so that it's not by nature. So, so that's, that's, you know, that would be cool, quarter powers, powers everywhere, the whole thing, you get all the scale relations. Once you've got the metabolism thing, you get everything else, you get crazy things, the lungs, and all sorts of stuff. Oh, that's super exciting. Just to show you the calculations, this is a very inscrutable paper. In, in science, science there's a lot of things get chopped out when you go into science, science, but it is really hard, hard to read. Okay, okay, so, so uh, then there, there are two, two pieces, pieces of two calculations that go, uh, go, go into this. this. The, the impedance that's set up for um, this, this more sim much, much more simplified idea of how, how flow might work, work versus, versus pulsatile. pulsatile. So this, this, is a, this is a calculation that's based on a better fluid mechanics model of well, it's explicitly done, done for flowing um, uh, elastic tubes, right? So we can pulse out some salt. Of course, there's a pulse of flow coming through. through. So there's yeah, a, a, a sort of flow. flow. But at least, but at least the pulse starts. Okay, okay, this, so there's so a classic, classic result, result in for the tubes, pushing fluid through tubes, as well as flow. And the basic thing there is you've got some fluid going through here, you've got some length L. This is from radius R, ah, and um, well, that's basically, basically it. it. The, the, the impedance of this little tube here is proportional to it. Of course, we're going to have pi pi's in there. There's the dynamics of this coffee. This is guy because we're in the world. So you have to use some calculations to get this. But it's proportional to length divided by R to the 4. So you increase the length. This is more impedance. You're trying to push something through this tube. And if you look inside that tube, you'll see the uh, velocity profile <coughs> which is parabolic. So there's an assumption of the fluid models that there's, there's, there's no, no flow here stuck, stuck essentially. Uh, nothing will go to the things fast. It's going to be fast in the middle and then slows down a parabolic in this parabolic part. Okay, okay, so, so if, if you, you, know, if you, you double, double radius, you get a 1 over 16. You really increase the... Sorry, you really decrease the impedance. So you get a lot expand this thing out. Much, much easier to push them. So that, that makes sense. So they are on the right. They're on the right. right. They're on the right. 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 Locations here. Uh, but the, the powers, powers are yep. yeah. not, not obvious. Right. 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 
If you move, move to this bonus, this is you get a weirdo looking thing. There's a red stone on the bottom. Length is completely gone. So length doesn't matter. Length doesn't And this is the thickness of the wall. This is a strange This is a strange This is the thickness of the wall. Is this H. And so now we have a thing like that. We'll go down in here. All right. So, so if you, you put this in, in and, and so what this is, is okay. I'll, finish I'll finish with this. This, this is, is a, a um, let me just finish, finish this a little bit. So, so there's, there's a sum here, here uh, over all, all these puzzle parts. parts. And, and what's, what's going, going on is there's one over N because, because you've, you've got, got a whole bunch of stuff, stuff in parallel. And if it's in parallel, it's a system that's right. If you've got parallel, you can get more red. And then they're all in series. Actually, you can go check your order. You think about this, and then a couple more tubes coming out, and then maybe little tubes. So, right. so, so these ones are parallel, and then the whole thing is just here. Um, <laughs> and there's some number, number of tubes at the cake level, 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 of a very low rate with proportional to mass, actually. Which we've seen is not true. You know, regardless of whether it's true or not, this, this is not, not, it's not the right result. result. That's sort, sort of the first part of the paper. And then and if you do the possible tile, tile flow, flow, the point is you need to get the free flow. But actually, you guys can do this because you know that the rule of law applies. It doesn't work. It actually mathematically does not hold together. It really does not. And that's what I'm going to say. Um, you, don't you don't get, get it. it. Networks, Networks aren't necessarily a factor. You have to assume a whole bunch of stuff. You do you get, get some nice things. things. One is Murray's law, which has yeah, come out of other places. That's and something we're talking about. about. Networks, which is very, very cool. cool. It's, it's this. When you, you see this, the outer branches of trees, that seems to be verified. You get some flow here, and we're often not in the arguments. Darcy Thompson would have this as a thing. There's some radius here, there's some radius here. Uh, uh, the, the cube, the cube, cube, so the cube of the radius, radius for the, the, the parent, parent branch, and then the offspring branches. So, 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 so you can so now use this for optimally. Uh, 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 um, you can. So, so that, that does pop out. out. You can show that the impedance is distributed evenly. So this, so it's a matching thing. So whatever comes after it has to basically just look like a. And then, and then the, the next one has to look like, like the other. So so there's, there's no deviations in your foot. But there could be five more branches here, here, and then a multiplicity factor of 20, and then a multiplicity factor of 3. This doesn't have to be a factor. Okay. You can see the network's a factor. People have taken out the network's organisms. We dug up the data and put it back in the day. It really published it. But someone has got a rat and a cat and a human. I don't know. I've got them. Uh, uh, do it in different, different ways. ways. Sometimes, Sometimes the humans are going to get the thing out. You can count these things. things. They use, use actually, actually the, 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 um, the branch, branch ordering stuff, stuff from the river network. So, so that was just transported all across to the blood network. Uh, uh, for the, for one, one of the rat studies, I know they filled it up with a plastic and removed the rat. So you have a whole network. Okay, so let me see. Okay, let me just finish with that. So you can say, all right, let's, let's imagine, imagine we have these nice ratios for all the clean ratios. The ratio, so the ratio of the number of branches, the ratio of their lengths, the ratio of their um, radii. And then, and then you, you can connect, connect it's a very dodgy, dodgy thing, 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 but you can connect the exponent um, because, because really, really you're saying the network ends in all these capillaries. And we'll say the metabolic rate is basically proportional to the capillaries, the number of capillaries. So bigger organisms have more capillaries. The branch, 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 more capillaries at the end. That's, That's the story. story. You, you can go through that calculation, you get, you get these branching, all these ratios involved. This is a common network, network attribute. attribute. It gives you this, this exponent alpha. alpha. So it's a pretty, pretty, that's a nice, nice calculation. calculation. It's a lot of fun thing. Uh, so, uh, so this is the number ratio, ratio, the length ratio, ratio and the um, radius, radius ratio. We're both really finished. Um, you can assume a whole bunch of things. If you want area of this area, of this tube, and the area, of this area, then you get this relationship. relationship. This is a space going on, which fell off the bottom. Um, it doesn't matter too much. But that should be two thirds. So, 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 so